it'll become evident that Martin and I have no, um, haven't really uh, got together on this, and uh, we may be covering a fair amount of uh, ground. But uh, now I'm going to see whether you've been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, this is a question, I, I think the, uh, if you were here this morning, Andrea said inequality has been increasing. Uh, my feeling is, I mean, when I look around London and see what's happened in the last 20 years, I think inequality is being increasing. Everywhere I go in the world, inequality seems to be increasing. What's the view of uh, how many people think inequality is, or feel inequality has been increasing? Do we... Do you want to vote? You have to vote yes or no, yes or no. Yeah. I'm just trying to get hands. Who says it's been decreasing? So I think uh, <laughs> you may be looking at the data. I'm just trying to uh, get a feeling for what, what people feel. People feel we're living in a world in which uh, inequality is increasing. And yet, as uh, Martin just uh, uh, showed us, that uh, pretty well all the standard measures that you tend to look at, suggests that uh, it's been decreasing for the last 20 or 30 years, well, 20 years, so we say. However, it does rely on asking a few questions about exactly what we're interested in here. What sort of uh, variable are we talking about? And of course, there's different income concepts, gross income, net income, consumption, as a resource that we might use to measure wealth. I've been heavily involved in, in measuring wealth, so that's another uh, sort of dimension. Are we talking about the world? Are we talking about uh, inequality within a region or within a particular country? What time period are we talking about? Is it just the last 20 years, the last, uh, um, you know, back to after the Second World War, around 1960, is it, or back to the beginning of the, the last century? Uh, which inequality measure are we talking about? Again, Martin just covered some of these things. I mean, if... Uh, the trouble was, I mean, whatever it is, five uh, years ago, Piketty just comes along, and I think he's, everyone gets brainwashed into thinking that uh, inequality is increasing, and certainly there's a lot of um, sort of uh, just uh, evidence that you come into contact with on a day-to-day -day basis that say, suggests that might be the same, uh, the true. Um, I'm going to just talk about, I've been involved in two assembling two large data sets and uh, monitoring them. Uh, each year now for the nine years we've been doing a, a wealth report for Credit Suisse in which we basically construct a wealth sample for the world. <coughs> it's around uh, 1.5 million observations in there now. And so we process this and look uh, per year, that is. Uh, so we process that. So we're looking at uh, a standard idea about net worth real property plus financial assets, less debts. Less debts. Uh, we use official exchange rates. That's another important thing when you're talking about these things. We uh, construct a distribution for adults. And again, that's uh, quite important to note. We also do a top tail adjustment in which we try and match, we match the data to the uh, Forbes billionaire list for the last now 20 years, we got 20 years of Forbes data that we match our numbers against and adjust the top tail for doing that. Um, on the income side, I've been involved and in, I'm currently working with the WID wider data set in which we're trying to improve it in all sorts of different ways, uh, clean it up, uh, fill in missing gaps, uh, standardize, uh, get some standardized values, and also construct a synthetic database again to try to do all the sort of things that we do with um, on the wealth side. So uh, at the moment, um, I, I'm just going to report on uh, some numbers which we get from using net household income. Um, this is based on individuals. We don't make any uh, adjustment for um, household equivalent scales, so they're just per capita. And at the moment, I'm not talking about a top tail adjustment, although that's, uh, we are hoping or planning uh, with a reasonable, we've already uh, achieved it to some extent, but I'm not reporting today on matching it against the, uh, the Paris uh, top tail um, numbers. So that's what we have. And let me just uh, 
Um, so here's a few summary things just to... Net worth is something like five times uh, income um, per capita. This is net worth per adult, so I guess there's roughly uh, two adults and uh, well, it's about twice as many people uh, when you do a per capita adjustment. Uh, so we're talking about, on average, wealth is about two and a half times, I suppose, income. The median value, you see there, the median value for wealth is, for income, it's about one-fifth. For wealth, it is uh, almost close to one-tenth, uh, one-eighth or something. The Gini is much higher. This is, this is the global values. Top 10%, 20% higher, and the top 1% is close to 50% in the wealth uh, area, whereas it's just uh, around 20% uh, in the income side. So there's a lot more, wealth is much more inequality, uh, is much more unequal. Um, I hope, uh, <coughs> when, uh, so these are just plots now of the income side and long series back to 1960. Um, as you see, the, uh, most of the inequality values trended upwards till around, at least late in last century, and then sometime in the last 10 years or something, they uh, flattened out and started to decrease. So I think pretty well everyone that does this comes to the same conclusion. Um, but again, there's a lot of methodological differences because I'm not quite sure. I mean, we try and reconstruct a distribution for the whole world. We, we don't leave out any country. We, if we haven't got uh, much data on, we just try and estimate it anyway and, and provide a sample for that. So our sample is not some countries in the early years, more later on and so on. Uh, it's not more complete. There's no, there's no change of the uh, country structure which is going to affect uh, the, the long-term trends. Um, and again, we construct a sample which is, again, uh, so we... Uh, do this for every single country and weight the things accordingly. Um, so the top 10%, you've got a little bit more of a, an obvious uh, fall around the turn of the century. And the top 1%, it looks like it's not really falling. So there is that, that ambiguity about whether inequality is, uh, is uh, going down lately. But for most of the more standard measures that, uh, that don't focus on very, very top parts, it looks like uh, there has been some reduction. Um, another thing which I think is quite interesting is to look at the, uh, the mean and the median. And we're able to do this because we, we effectively have a sample for the whole world, so we can, we can quite easily uh, compute the median global income. Um, and I've done that now. This is just uh, normal, uh, indexed on... Uh, uh, 2007 I've taken. So we just see the mean income increased. Um, sorry, the, the mean increase has risen over the whole period at a fairly uh, constant rate. Um, the median income for income has uh, really speeded up since, uh, since the turn of the century. And that's, again, so that the median has uh, increased as a proportion of the mean, uh, and that is indicating um, a, a reduction in inequality. I'm, in some respects, I think it gives a rather clearer pattern than any of the other measures, so I, I'm going to report that uh, for, for wealth and income. I think it rather uh, brings out the comparison. Um, I'm going to quickly go through these, um, just to say, if you look at the different regions, and, and just see what is happening to the Gini coefficients. It's not as if uh, there's the, the global picture looks like there's a compositional problem, that is, there's a, a change in the regions, but somehow the regional uh, balance is changing, and that's uh, causing the, the overall global effect. Um, so these, on the whole, the, the sort of the world value and the uh, the regional values seem to be more or less uh, in parallel. Um, let me, uh, given we're moving time and you might want to learn about wealth inequality, here it is for the world. And again, you see the much, much higher figures 
we are here. And you look at that and you have to say, it looks like in the top, top graph we're talking about, the blue figures are, uh, that's for the genie. Uh, the top 10% is the gray figure. They're really not much different. They're very high in the, up in the high 80s, 90s. And there's, looking at that, eyeballing it, doesn't suggest that there's much changing over time. Uh, the top 1% is, um, as uh, the other difference here, I should say, is we only got the data for uh, wealth from 2000. So we're on a more compressed uh, time scale here. But the, um, the figures for the top 1% have trended downwards since the turn of the century till the global financial crisis. Since then, they've gone up. Um, but it hasn't really affect, affected uh, the top 10% um, or the Gini coefficient very much. One of the theories about why, why this is happening and why wealth inequality might be differing is to do with uh, the composition uh, rich wealth holders tend to have a different uh, composi wealth composition. Their portfolio is more heavily weighted towards uh, financial assets. Particularly, uh, you know, they tend to own uh, stocks in companies, often their own company. These things are traded on international markets. Uh, the, the last uh, 10 years has been very favorable to those sort of assets. People have done very well. And that may be one of the reasons why the... Uh, um, <coughs> the num the uh, share has gone up. <coughs> um, sorry. Um, so on the on the bottom there, it's, we're looking at the. Uh, you can see, then again, the mean and the median indexed on 2007 for what for wealth. It's really quite stark there, isn't it? Um, the mean or mean wealth went up to 2007, then just had a little bit of a dip and then went con continued to rise. The median actually did rather better in, in, the, in the years up to 2007. The wealth inequality declined a little bit. The median did better, the median person did better than the, the mean, in, uh, mean wealth. But since then, it's been pretty flat and uh, nothing's, the median wealth has been vir virtually constant. So whereas the mean wealth has gone up for the reasons I've just said. So you can think of this, the sort of gains that we've had since the financial crisis, pretty well all the gains have gone to the groups above the median. So the median's just uh, stagnating there. The other difference, uh, the notable difference, if you get, get into this comparison between income and wealth, is that there's a lot of wealth holders with negative holdings. You don't really get this. So the, the whole question about... Wealth inequality can go up because the people at the top draw away or the people at the bottom fall behind. And one of the evident trends, particularly this century, uh, is being the fact that at the bottom, more people are reporting negative wealth. A lot of this is um, people taking out more debts, but in particular student debt, which you know before 2000 was quite rare a small number of countries. Now there's lots of countries where people, students take out quite large amounts of debt and that seems to be reported, uh, recorded in the figures. So when you're, that's another reason why, um, you know, sometimes you have to think about what inequality measure you're using and whether or not uh, having negative values and the fact that there's more negative wealth holders, whether that is um, a, a sort of uh, something that you can deal with. Um, so, um, here is, I have tried to combine so we can look and see what's happened to income and wealth together. So the, the sort of red and brown and, uh, are, are, the, uh, are the wealth values, the blues are the uh, income values. So the, the quick, uh, for the world, it looks like wealth has been flat or slightly increasing uh, for income side inequality seems to be trending downwards. This is just, of course, since the year 2000. Um, and that's why I quite like looking at this mean to median ratio. I've used the mean to median because that, if that goes up, it's reflecting uh, increased inequality. So you get some, it's a rather clean, clear picture here 
uh, in which the income looks like it's trending, inequality is trending down, the wealth is uh, going down and then trending upwards again um, after the, uh, after the uh, crisis period. Um, I've done now for a lot of different countries just to see what's been happening. And for most of these, actually, um, because you could say what's happening globally, wealth is going up because you know, we're shifting towards, uh, the weight is shifting towards countries which have more in inequality. So there's a compositional effect. Uh, the, in fact, inequality is going down in each country but it's offset by the change in composition. The same would be true of income. You might say in global inequality is going up, but in inequality in, in each country is being constant or going down. It's just that the, uh, we're switching China, India, getting more weight, and that's uh, changing the, the global pattern. Um, there is some sort of truth to that, in a sense that in, when we look at uh, individual countries, the blue lines on the current, on the following pages are, are the ones where income, and for, in most countries there's not every evidence of much of a decline in income inequality within countries. So people that think that inequality has is, is not been falling lately, they could easily just say, I'm talking about my own country. Most of them can't times to be correct. For the states, uh, there's a big jump in wealth inequality though around 2007. Here we have the Chinese, again, income inequality, I'm looking, I'm just doing the analysis from the bottom picture here. Income inequality, fairly flat. Wealthy income inequality, definitely trending up in China quite considerably. Uh, India, ditto, and uh, Brazil, now you're a slight fall apparently in income inequality, but wealth inequality, again, not really showing any, any falling pattern and higher at the end than it was in the beginning. South Africa, fairly flat. I can go through all these uh, sort of countries. Russia is always a, a bit of a problem. Uh, it's uh, quite erratic. It depends rather heavily on the top tail adjustments. But again, in all of these countries, there isn't really the, the notion that income inequality isn't really doing very much. Global income inequality is probably going down for at least uh, a good part of the global uh, composition effect. Um, and uh, this is, again, for Africa as a whole. Um, I just, uh, I'm probably running out of time. Yes, I am. So I just thought uh, it might be, I, <clears throat> I noticed that uh, Martin did a sort of uh, decomposition into within and between inequality. I'm not sure. Um, I'd have to look at that. But uh, my feeling is that that's not the right, right way to do it. And uh, I was trying to... Um, construct some numbers and produce them, but I didn't uh, get that finished in time. But uh, essentially, um, it would perhaps answer this question about to, to what extent the compositional effects are responsible for what's happening to the global uh, trend. Um, I will certainly be doing that in the future. So here's just, uh, I just thought, uh, because we're in Finland and may have some Finnish members of the audience who are desperate to know, uh, what's happening to Finland. Here's our figures for Finland again. Income inequality, it doesn't seem to have done much for the last 20 years. Wealth inequality, not really increasing up to the year 2000, to the crisis, but has been increasing since then. Although I should make a caveat here that Finland, we do do some, we do an adjustment using the, we, we're merging the, the Forbes billionaire data and we're smoothing the series out but it, it is still there's only a small number of billionaires in Finland so there is a small sample problem uh, which does uh, qualify the results and uh, just finally yes okay I'm I'm on zero and uh, that's very convenient because I'm just finishing with uh, Sweden Again, the same sort of thing. It's getting a bit boring, isn't it? Uh, inco in income inequality in all these countries really seems to be pretty flat. Um, but um, wealth inequality uh, is fluctuating at a bit and certainly higher at the end of the period than perhaps it was at the beginning. Okay, thank you very much.